and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, live from the Houdini Room at the Casa de Cool, it's Comic Extravaganza, brought to you by BDC Entertainment and GraphicPolicy.com, along with Comic City Conventions, in cooperation with the Unlockable Characters and Cosplay Collective. And now, please welcome your host, the time-traveling, comic book-loving, diesel punk, rocket of pop culture, the king of swing, the tower of power, Big Daddy Cool, Johnny Della Rocca. Hey there, all you hipcats, cool kittens, you guys and dolls, you diesel-powered disciples of cool. It is time once again for Comic Stravaganza Live! Yay. And uh, I am your host, Big Daddy Cool, Johnny Della Rocca, along with Darth Lee, Leanna Blair, and filling in for Tina Vita, Amy Sulam of the Unlockable Characters, and uh, she's got some awesome nerdy news for us later on, and uh, thanks for uh, filling in for Tina. I'm happy to do it. I'm glad she's getting to go to that awesome concert. Yes, she is. Leaving us here. Yeah. Leaving us here. But it's okay. We she, got it. <laughs> she's listening to the music of Zelda at the uh, Nashville Symphony, and she is uh, actually going to be live tweeting with us uh, all throughout the uh, show, all throughout the uh, concert. So you can go to at Live Comics on Twitter mm -hmm. and see her live tweets. And if you're watching live right now, we want you to uh, tweet us back your questions for our brand new segment, Ask the Prophet. Woo yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going to be awesome. Because, you know, I am the prophet of pop culture. It's, it's the truth, Amy. They gave me this title two years ago. And uh, it's because every time I predict something that's going to happen in the world of comics or pop culture... Inevitably, it comes true. Now, who, it, who is they? Who's who they? they exactly. Yeah, they. I was gonna. I was gonna um, ask that. Uh, the original cast of the other show that we used to <laughs> <Okay>. do. Okay. <laughs> it's like the voices in my head. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so uh, it's stuck. I am the prophet of pop culture. The prophet has spoken. Can you dig <laughs> that? I knew that you could. And uh, speaking of prophecies coming true. Two years, you can go back and you can, I'm going to go ahead and say it. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Two years ago on Tales from the Geek, I made a prediction that the Jonathan Hickman run of the Avengers was going to end with the merging of the 616 Marvel Universe and the Ultimates Universe. And yesterday, yesterday Marvel announced that is absolutely the truth that is going to happen this summer, this June, with Secret Wars. Once again, who was right? That's right, this guy. This guy. That's right. That's right. Is your mind blown? Mine is. Well, yeah, yeah. So, and we're going to talk about what that means in a little bit. But before we do that, we got to talk about what we just did. What did we do? Was we, I there? We, yeah, you were there. Oh. Now, Amy, you didn't get to join us, mm. but you were doing something far more important. You're, you're, you were at a cheerleading competition. I was. I was supporting my child's stupid dream. <laughs> no dreams you are thought, stupid. We were going to say she was the cheerleader. Oh, well, yeah, that's me. You could be a cheerleader. <laughs> I, I could see you sailing through the air with some pom-poms. I'd be like, guys, let's get excited. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Go team. Alrighty then. No, but we were at the Murfreesboro <laughs> Anime and Comic Con. We were, uh, this was our very first con since forming uh, Comic Stravaganza and launching the show. And we were there just exhibiting. We had, yeah. we had a couple of booths. We did the Cosmetality Suite with Dee and Nancy from Cosplay Collective. And, and I did a panel on podcasting. Dee and Nancy did a panel on Cosplay 101. Heard great things about that panel. A lot of people really got some good information from it. Because you know what? It wasn't one of those panels, Amy. Have you ever been to one of those cons where the cosplay panel are, are the uh, bleach blondes talking about all their favorite cosplays that they do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's not what this was. This was D. Nancy and Tina was part of it. 
actually talking about practical information for anyone who wants to get into cosplay. Why, how, where, all of that cool stuff. And, and it was really, really uh, solid information for a lot of people who were there. You guys did a fantastic job. Yeah, I'm sorry I awesome. missed that because I'm sure it was fun. Yeah, well, and, and, then, and then I hosted the cosplay contest, yep. emceed that, um, with no sound. No sound reinforcement. And, and he used all the talent that he's got right here. I was a little bit hoarse <laughs> Sunday morning, but in that huge open hotel atrium with all of the noise of the games behind, the swimming pool, the people milling around down below. And I don't think anyone had a problem hearing me though, do you? Oh. No. I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. <laughs> I, listen, I can pump out the sound when I need to. Yeah, I yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then uh, Big Daddy Cool and the Bombshell Kittens, Tina Vita mm -hmm. and uh, Alabaster Glory, we did uh, the Swing Magic review for the VIP party, and people loved that, had a great time. At Murfreesboro Anime Comic Con, it was awesome. Now, the next show we're going to be in is the Franklin Comic and Toy Show, March 8th. We're going to be doing some of the same, some different stuff, and then Marble City Con in Knoxville. April 25th and 26th. And here's the thing. We are doing professional, proven programming for these cons. And if you're a con organizer out there or you're thinking about putting together a con or you're helping put together a con in 2015, let's face it. The, the biggest hassle you have is planning high-quality programming. Because, Amy, you and I talked about this. Mm -hmm. It's easy to go get Joe Schmo down the street mm -hmm. to come do his maybe passable panel. Yeah. But it's a whole nother thing to have professional performers, entertainers, broadcasters, whatnot, cool. do proven, planned, intentional panels. Yep, it's difficult to find people who are quality performers and quality on stage just acts and come in with, you know, people a team that knows what they're doing, um, to put on a performance or run a panel that actually is informative or they know is gonna be fun. Like I've said to you in conversation many times, you can get any local idiot to do a stand-up <laughs> comedy show at your con. It doesn't mean it's going to be very good. So, I mean, not that ours will be super amazing, but I come with that deal. So the other three guys don't really matter. Yeah, no. You can get Amy Sulam on your stage. Yeah. Her alone is worth the price of admission. Yep. And so do it. Get in touch with us. Get in touch with the Con Extravaganza crew, Unlockable Characters, Cosplay Collective. Say, hey, we want you to come plan, you know, help us fill our programming. Look, you can handle all the celebrities, book all your celebrities, get that out of the way. We'll even host those Q&As for you so that your staff doesn't have to worry about, you know, dealing with Nicholas Brendan. He, you know, the wait, wait, did I just say that out loud? <laughs> I love you, Nikki. You're my butt. Socks forever, baby. He knows what that means. Um, so, uh, <laughs> there's a story there, trust me. Um, maybe it's not one you guys That has to do with socks? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's, okay. He's a, yeah anyway. Well. Anyway, but you can get us to come in. We'll, we'll fill the holes in your programming with proven professional programming. Panels, workshops, um, gaming segments. Uh, emceeing your main stage, live entertainment with the unlockable characters, Big Daddy Cool and the Bombshell Kittens, cosplay contest, we can do it. Just get in touch with us through uh, BigDaddyCoolShows.com. There's a link to uh, Comic Extravaganza Live, and you can check out all the details on how that can happen. All right, we got big news, huge news. I mentioned it just a minute ago. Marvel Universe, no more. Done. Kaput. 1961 to 2015, over. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's a stretch. Now, you might imagine, since they announced this news yesterday, the internet has melted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fanboys of every ilk have something to say about this. Right. And so, obviously, the cool one needs to say something about this to set the record straight. I'm going to tell you what this means and really what you should think about it. Um, well, first of all, it means exactly what they said. They, they are ending, it's not a joke, they are ending the 616 Marvel Universe and the Ultimate Universes, and they're merging them together and pulling 
pieces of their other multiversity into it. And it's basically Marvel's version of Crisis on Infinite Earths. If you guys remember Crisis, the original DC re reboot, this is kind of Marvel's version of it. Um, except they're not necessarily wiping away everything that has happened. They're wiping away some of what has happened. Some is staying in place, and some new origins will be uh, will be in place. So, so, how do you feel about this? Well, you know, it needed to happen. Yeah. It needed to happen for a couple of reasons. One, the Marvel universe, the multiversity, uh, has gotten really unwieldy. It's impossible for new fans to jump into a classic book like the X Men or the Avengers. You know, these team books and really invest themselves and right. jump in from ground run one. It's really tough. And so <clears throat> they, they kind of needed to have a cleaning of house anyway because you got two lines, these two universes going side by side but in divergent directions. The Ultimates over here, the mainstream 616 Marvel U, and, and, and you know, which is which. So it'd be really confusing. It can be really confusing. And then on top of it. Yeah. Isn't knowledgeable like you. That's right. I've seen that happen with news stories when they did, um, when they did the Hispanic Spider-Man. Some news organizations lost their mind about it, not understanding. One, they shouldn't lose their mind about it because I think we're a little bit beyond right. race really mattering for our superheroes. But two, they didn't understand that it was not Peter Parker that they were talking about. It was some, so it's very confusing even for yeah. these people who I'm sure grew up on Spider-Man and Batman and know who they are. Right. They're just not familiar with the multiverse. Yeah. Well, and then on top of that, you've got the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the movies and TV universe that is being built and formed. And See, that's the universe I know. That's right. <laughs> and for fans like you, they oh, go to the yeah. comics, and it doesn't resemble anything that they've seen yeah. on screen. Yeah. And it really creates kind of this disconnect in the so product. So that the what branding. they're going to do is kind of move towards yes. the movie? Yes. That, that, is, that is what I believe is that they are unifying the movie universes and the print universes and creating a streamlined branding um, going forward, which I think is just smart. I, I think it is too. I think it's smart. Um, we'll, we'll have to wait and see all of the details, but I know a lot of people are really upset. A lot of guys I read are like, well, this is a good time for me to just stop collecting and stop reading altogether. And I'm like, okay. okay. All right. You're going to pick up all new Avengers number one, just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, don't pretend like you're going to quit collecting comics after you've been reading them for 43 years. Ain't going to happen. You ain't it, fooling It's a nobody. habit. You just can't drop it yeah. like that. Well, and the other thing that uh, none of the news stories, none of the fanboys are talking about this, but I think this factors in big. And uh, uh, some, of the, uh, some of the congregation here, they might chime in and, and nod their heads that I think what's happening here is an church. effort. Yeah, you're at the Church of Cool. Casa de Cool. You know? Amen, brother. You, yes. <laughs> Preach it. Preach it, Reverend. I, anyway. Pastor John. Well, no. One of the things. No, the right Reverend Big Daddy Cool. Oh, That's okay. what it is. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> get it straight, Leanna. I'm trying. I'm if trying. you're going to be a deaconess in this church, you need to, you know, <laughs> learn the titles and learn the lingo. Anyway, um, no, I think Disney needed to um, do one other thing. Marvel and Disney needed to get around some of their copyright. Um, obligations mm -hmm. with their most popular characters, the X-Men and Spider-Man. Currently, Spider-Man is owned, the film rights are owned by Sony. The X-Men, the film rights are owned by Fox. Right. And they also own the film rights to the Fantastic Four, but nobody really cares about them. Um, so, uh, <laughs> wow. to the point that, that Marvel is completely canceling the Fantastic Four. Done. Gone. Never more. Well, at least until after the movie comes out. Okay. But <clears throat> I think this is a way for Marvel and Disney to maneuver around some of those contractual obligations, specifically around the term mutant. Yeah. Because the way the Fox contract is, any character that is a mutant falls into the X-Men universe, yeah. and they have first dibs on it. Well, we saw on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., 
at the uh, mid-season finale, they revealed the Inhumans. Mm -hmm. And in Axis, I think number seven, uh, the Scarlet Witch, well, we discovered that Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are not the children of Magneto. So they are not mutants. And it is being set up that they are going to be Inhumans. And so for the Marvel movie universe, Inhumans are going to take the place of mutants. Gotcha. And so by restarting and recombining, it opens up all of these new possibilities for the spider people and for Wolverine in particular. Makes sense. Have you thought about that? I have not. I think it's a pretty sound theory. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Prophet speaks again. Yes, the prophet has spoken. All right. Oh. You should, whenever you say that, you should just like slap one of our foreheads. Hers. Yeah. You may be healed. <laughs> I grew up in that kind of church, actually. Right? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Really? They had the snakes and everything. It that was awesome. Like I think if I, if I if I were part of this whole debacle, that I, I I would make mutant Mickey just to see what they would do with it. Like I would just walk into a meeting, <laughs> legitimately being like, no, seriously, it's Mickey Mouse yeah. the mutant. Yeah. yeah. What kind of special powers? Yeah. Would he mess have? with that. X Mickey. Yeah. Mickey X. Just, I wish I could do a Mickey Mouse impression, and then I would do like a crazy voice, but I can't. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Here's your Wolverine! Up yours, Fox! <laughs> anyway, um, am I allowed to do that? Good. Well, you yeah. know, I, I can do some impressions. Yeah. Um, every once in a while. Oh, here, here's, you'll, you'll, love, you'll appreciate this one. <clears throat> this is my Pee Wee Herman. Wow! Those are some really big breasts you have. <laughs> May I? Agent Pee Wee calling Washington. Agent Pee Wee calling Washington. Ah! Yeah. Now, we, now we need somebody who can do a cherry impression. <laughs> All right, we got a big contest going on. Big giveaway. Yes, we do. Big giveaway. Um, JLA, four graphic novels. We've got. Batman, the three, you, you know, you could help me out here, sister. Uh, three graphic novels, and we've You're got doing a mighty fine job of five, you. the complete set of all five Batman No Man's Land graphic novels. Now, this is the grand prize, mm -hmm. the big first prize winner. Third prize is these three, second prize is these four. If you were at Mac, you got an extra opportunity to That's win right. the first prize, and that was uh, uh, entering our drawing. Next Wednesday, we're going to draw for these. Now, if you weren't able to fill out a drawing card at, at Mac, you can enter to win by going to our Facebook pages. Anyone, Unlockable Characters, Darth Lee, Comic Extravaganza. Uh, Cosplay Collective, My Big Daddy Cool Page, Tina Vita, any of them. Any of them. And like, comment, and share. For every like, you'll be entered once. For every comment, you'll be entered twice. You'll get two entries. For every share, every time you share a post, five entries. Wow. Five entries. So, uh, share, share, share. Do it and love it. Actually, do it because it's a lot of fun. Because who doesn't want to share Tina's pictures? Those are amazing. And did you see the one she posted oh, today? Gosh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, I was just like, I didn't man. see it today. Which which one oh, was it? Oh, was it the, the bareback? The, yeah, with the red, the yeah, red yeah. sheet or whatever. Yeah. Oh my god! But, oh, yeah. and, and it was just her back. No, no, no. Oh, no. you haven't seen that one yet. One, okay. Okay. You need to go so, and yeah, check don't it out. Don't like Tina's pictures. Yeah, she's uh, she's pretty spectacular, and you'll you'll dig that a lot. As I'm speaking of Tina Vita, let's oh, see, yeah. uh, let's check in with her, see if uh, she's tweeted anything from the Zelda concert. I don't see anything. We Anybody should, else? We should tweet her and be she's like, probably lost in the music. And be she like, might be. What are you doing? She might be. She was having problems logging into Twitter earlier. She, you know, I love her to death. And for Gamer Girl, she's really not that tech savvy. <laughs> she can saying. shake her booty, though. Bless her heart. She's fantastic on stage. I love her to death. One of my favorite people on the planet. All right. We got a new segment. We had an idea. The top ten, our own top ten. Top ten reasons not to date Darth Vader. 
<laughs> Leanna, this is all yours, baby. This is mine. We're just, okay. Yeah, we're going to stand back and laugh, unless you want us to chime in. You can definitely chime in, because these are pretty great. I need okay. you just to hold that okay. until the time is all right. right. All right. Okay, so, top ten reasons not to date Darth Vader. All Thank right. you, Facebook, by the way. <laughs> Do I? Thank you, Facebook, so, yes, by the way. Yes, a lot of people commented on this. This is great. You guys are so funny, and I, I, I love you, because these had me crying. So, number ten is... Because he has helmet hair. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> number nine, his heart is colder wait, than Hawk. Wait, I thought that was number ten. No, that's going to be number oh, one. Oh, okay. I'll switch it around. Number nine. His heart is colder than Hawk. <laughs> I kind of spoke over you. They, uh... You did. <laughs> number seven, because he cannot grow a beard. <laughs> She See, she, she thinks she it's got funny. It. I, I don't get it. it. I, he can't be a lumber sexual. No, no hamster dog. You know, it's really important for women, for a guy to be able to grow a beard. Amen. Sister. You know, even if we don't want you to grow it, you have to be able to grow it. Yeah, facial hair. Yeah, we don't want the patchy, you know. Keep it clean shaven if you get patchy, because yeah. then it just looks like you got attacked by a rat. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. Or a honey badger. Or, yeah, a honey badger. <laughs> oh, oh, my all God. in your sleep. <laughs> Number seven. He has a history of domestic violence. This is oh. true. <laughs> okay. Number six. He skipped out on child support. Oh, oh, oh. Story. Deadbeat. For yeah. 19 Dead years. Beat yeah. yeah, I wonder how much that would be. I mean, is the galactic money different? It'd be like $11 billion. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah it's now. 11 billion galactic credits. Oh, yeah. good gosh. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think he can afford that. Well, I think he, he can. He might have to, you know, he can win like, a couple of rounds at the Saturday. He'd have to table. hawk the Death Star. Think of his child support. The court comes and, like, puts it on a <laughs> <truck. laughs> Can you imagine having to face the emperor after that? Right. <laughs> what happened? What happened? You, you have failed me, my apprentice. <laughs> now I will strike you down with all my fury. <laughs> my baby father's ratchet. This <laughs> <laughs> should be amazing. Oh, okay. Number five. He's a master in the streets, but a Padawan in the sheets. Oh! <laughs> Ouch. That has got to hurt. Oh, God. Okay, number four. Because he is your father. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's a bad one. This is you. Number three. Because he won't stop playing that damn harmonica. <laughs> Oh, can y'all see it? It's funny. <laughs> it's funny. That is funny. Uh, and number, well, I think I mixed up the number You, mi you missed it. You were at number three, and I know. y'all were somewhere at number one. I added something in here yeah, that just yeah, messed yeah. up the number. So, anyway. We're going to pretend. Number one, he's full of sit. <laughs> but on Yay! And that is this week's top ten reasons not to date Darth Vader. Thank, Thank you, everybody, for tuning in with this week's now, now warm up your uh, keyboard because next week we're going to do a pro and con. The pros and cons of public nudity. Oh, yeah. So get it ready. Yeah. Okay, I like that. I've got several. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There, there's there's no cons of public I'm nudity. A pro it, it depends because I, I'm of the opinion <laughs> that male nudity, always funny. <laughs> always funny. It's never not funny. Snuffleupagus. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's hilarious. I don't know why I just thought about that. Help, That's the same thing I was thinking. It's like we're psychic <laughs> together. Oh. Wow. Okay. Um, Hi, bird. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> All right. It is time. It is time for our hot picks of the week. Right. I'm going to start with uh, some comics and swag. Uh, this week, I, I didn't have a chance to run by the comic shop and pick them up today. Today is New Comics Day. Um, but I did get to read the previews from Dynamite. Cool. We were on the preview distribution list. That's one of the coolest things about having your own show, is that they send you stuff to talk about. Mm -hmm. and, and so, Flash Gordon, number eight, by uh, Jeff Parker, Doc Evan Shaner, and then the brand new King's feature, Flash Gordon, number one. Oh, and I'm going to forget the artist because I don't have it in front of me. Um, and then the King's feature, Phantom. First of all, Flash Gordon number eight ends the current run that uh, Parker and Shaner have done. 
It's been my favorite book for the last eight months. Almost every month it comes out and I talk about it. Right. And, and this episode, this issue was, was the best yet. It was the perfect ending. It was the perfect character piece that really reveals the heart of Flash and Dale and Zarkov. And it ends on the perfect note and sets the stage for the new creative team with the brand new ongoing series. They're starting with a new, um, actually it's a mini series, four issues to celebrate the acquisition of all of the King's Features characters at Dynamite. So there's an issue number eight of Flash Gordon out this week and issue number one, which picks up where issue number eight left off. Perfect start, fantastic. The writing is top notch, the art picks right up where Shader left off, even though it's a different writing and art team. And sorry, guys, I can't remember off the top of my head because I don't have it in front of me what it is. And then uh, King's Features Phantom, number one. This is a brand new chapter in the uh, Phantom. Uh, the last Phantom, uh, Christopher Walker, not Ooh, what, Walken, what? Oh, Walker, man. sacrificed his life to save the world in the uh, big final battle against Ming the Merciless in King's Watch. And Lothar... The companion, sidekick to Mandrake the Magician, took the mantle of the Phantom. Oh now, this is huge because never in the history of the character has there been anyone other than someone of the Walker family line right. to be the Phantom. And Lothar, you know, he's one of those characters that is kind of forgotten. He's one of these pulp characters, adventurer, crime fighters, superhuman strength, super smart. He's got some magical background because he hangs out with Mandrake. He's taken on the role of the Phantom, and he says he's only going to stay the Phantom until he can find... He says, I'm going to be the guy until I can find the next guy. Yeah. So, um, really cool, great, great stuff. Artwork, I wasn't uh, quite on board with. I'm hoping it gets a little bit better, but the concept story, awesome. Now, um, this is not brand new, but I want to bring everyone's attention to the Grendel vs. Shadow series. This was a three-book series written by uh, Matt Wagner, and art by Matt Wagner, um, pitting the Grendel vs. the Shadow. It's a time travel story. The Grendel goes back to the 1930s by uh, accident, and... Um, it's right up your alley. It is right up my alley. Here, you want to oh, check it out? Now, these came out just before Christmas, um, but they're so good, I want to recommend that you go check them out. They're the best shadow stories I've ever read, um, and that's saying a lot, because I've read a lot of them. And I had never read the Grendel before, and really got turned on to this character. And uh, the, uh, the fight sequences, the intrigue, the, the storyline are really great. Well, the Grendel has been a very popular character, especially in the late 80s, mid through the mid 90s. Right. Um, ultra violent, um, you know, kind of part of that whole, if you want to call it, attitude era of comics. Um, nod to you WWF fans. Um, where everything was like, you know, hyper violent, hyper bloody, hyper, you know, and, yeah. yeah, yeah, like hyper testosterone, and um, but the Grendel is kind of has that that edge, but super suave, debonair. Kind of asks the question: What if Bruce Wayne were a villain? Is really the best way to think about it. Mm. Hunter Rose is a a bad guy, Bruce Wayne. Okay, well, yeah. and uh, so this is like bad series. boys. I like villains too. I'm always like, oh, I wanted him to win. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I do too. I love I love the villain. So. Uh, Grendel vs. Shadow, all three books. That's my hot, hot pick of the week. It's still available in comic shops. You can go out and grab it. It's only three issues, so it's not a huge time or money investment. And you'll be glad you did because it's a great read. I'll tell you, I'm always judgmental of any person who calls himself a comic book fan when you say, like, they'll go, oh, I don't know, or who knows. And I always will say, the Shadow knows. If they don't <laughs> get that joke, if they don't That's get that That's fantastic. Let me tell and I... In all honesty, never read a Shadow Book, but my brother is such a huge yeah. fan that yeah. that was his response to everything. <laughs> so um, it's very like I'm like a Pavlov, yeah, Pavlovian dog or whatever. I'm just like, oh, a what? A what? Pavlov's dog? What is it? Yeah, what you know that? when when you ring the, a bell, ring the, the dog. Ring the bell and they sound like it's a trained response. Yeah, because you, he thinks response. he's gonna get a treat. Oh yeah. But then eventually you right, take right? the treat away. It's trained right. But the dog okay. still reacts to the bell, thinking that he's going to get food. That's how I potty trained my son. 
I'm just kidding. See, anytime I think, whenever I think I might have said something stupid, I just look over here for yeah. affirmation. Was that right? <laughs> Good. Okay. Well, the best thing about these studio lights is you can't see the rest of the studio audience, so you have no idea if he's actually like, nodding or not. He's totally nodding. Okay. He's like, you're totally right. <laughs> All right, Leanna, it is time for your red box pick of the week. Oh, man. Okay, so I started out with one at the beginning of yeah, last you even week. Posted and now, yeah, I posted it. The, uh, this is where I leave you with Jason Bateman and uh, I Tina Fey. It is a good movie. Like, I thought I it would, you know, be okay, cheesy, but it, it was actually really, really good. Like, I, I cracked up. I almost cried a couple of times. But this morning, uh, work closed the office for a couple of hours because there was a water pipe that busted over on Elm Hill. No, no, not just a pipe, a water pumping. main. A main, okay. 60 inches of pipe, which is a big honking pipe. Right. There was a river flowing down Elm Hill Pike. Well, so they sent me a text that said, hey, don't come in. You know, we'll let you know when you can come in. So I was like, all right. So I put in um, Planet of the Apes. The new uh, Dawn of the Planet Dawn of the Apes, of the Planet Planet of the Apes. Of the Apes. Yeah. and that that one was awesome too. Like I, I saw that in theaters, it was mind blowing. Well, it's just like the because I don't know how much CGI they use on A the lot. Apes, mm -hmm. but but it really it really really good. Like I mean, is there a actual person in a costume and they kind of go over it or sometimes? But, like I love Caesar. Like I want yeah. I just want to hug him. Well, Caesar was a guy named Andy Circus mm -hmm. who did what they call the m motion capture. He was Gollum. Yeah, yeah, he played Gollum. Oh, He's yeah. going to play Claw in Avengers 2. He was King Kong. He's really? known for he being He was in 13 to... going on 30. He was the boss of the magazine. Right. You know, Thank he's you. known for being able to do that that yeah. physicality, the motions. And yeah. so, you know, they put him in a ping pong ball suit and right. they used parts of his face for the... And, and so they did, for Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, they did part motion capture, part costume, but then they also used real apes too really yeah there are some scenes where they're, where they're real uh, apes but one more thing yeah <laughs> last night i went to go see the new hobbit movie <laughs> and yeah. i cried <laughs> i got emotional watching it it was just it, it was a great ending to that story like the first hobbit movie i just didn't care for it because it's just so much cgi on it that it kind of makes me dizzy but i really like grew to love it and then I went and seen it last night, and it's just really, really sad because it's like there's no more. There, there's no more to this story. Hallelujah! <laughs> no, oh. no. I'm I'll not a that. fan of the Lord of the Rings or Hobbits movies. There's only one I didn't Hobbit think I movie. Would be. And then I watched the movies, and I was like, Lord, yeah. thank you. I hate this so <laughs> much. God. For, for, for me, there's I only one it was Hobbit so ugly movie. When I was younger, and that was in now, the 80s. I'm growing up, I'm just like, yeah. The animated one? Yeah, yeah. Hot. yeah so I got someone I can relate to. But anyway, that was a great movie. If you can catch it in the theater, I would recommend do it. But you better hurry because it's not going to be in the theater much longer. I mean, as soon as you're done watching this, yeah, one. It. Yeah, because we're done at 8 Central, 9 Wait till it's over. Wait yeah. till this is over. Yeah. You, you could still catch it. Yep. Tonight. Yeah. yeah. And that's my pick of the week. All right. Well, you know what time it is, Amy? It is time for the nerdy news. Yay! That's me. Yes. Yeah. We're going to step out and let your uh, your guests step in. My guests. All right. My guests. I'm so excited to have somebody doing this with me this week, everybody. Um, so this is one of my fellow unlockable characters, and this is his name is Paul Voigt, and he is really funny. Sometimes. What's going on? <laughs> I'm an uglier quarter of the unlockable characters. You are. You're like all of the ugly. It's true. And I'm all of the pretty. No, well, I'm ugly on the outside, as your vice versa. So. <laughs> <laughs> but either way. I'll eat your you soul your later. I will eat your soul later. So we're going to centralize. I brought cheat sheet notes, because I'm not as professional as everybody else, clearly. Um, we're going to go over some nerdy news. Uh, I just got to say with Johnny, I agree. I think the animated Hobbit was the one, especially with the trilly Bilbo Baggins singing. With somebody just, it's the story of Bilbo Baggins and stuff. Do you so. know what? That's funny because no one here right now in front of the camera gives a crap about your opinions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hate you so much. <laughs> So, all right, so what do you want to talk about? Anything I want to talk about Deadpool. Deadpool, that's true. Ryan Reynolds is just now in the uh, yeah. workings of the Deadpool movie, uh, which is amazing. Yeah, he's, like, well, we were talking on the in the car on the way over here. He's an Adonis. I mean, he is a he is. beautiful, he's a beautiful, beautiful man. man. It, 
Deadpool is not. Wade no. Wilson is not a no. beautiful man. He lives on chimichangas like some other... And I'm pretty sure Ryan Reynolds has never eaten a chimichanga, so yeah. I don't know if he's going to really be able to connect with the character. But anything's got to be that abomination of a portrayal of Deadpool as an X-Men Origins Wolverine. Oh, yes. so, so hopefully they just completely retcon that and... I think Ryan Reynolds hasn't had a car since he was a fetus. Probably. 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 <laughs> that would be my guess. But yeah, I'm excited to see him as Deadpool. I'm hoping that there are lots of scenes where Deadpool has to shower off or is at the gym. <laughs> yeah. No, you don't want to see Deadpool outside of his costume. Like, he's all tumors. No, like, I want to see all... Ryan Reynolds outside no, of his Ryan costume. No, Ryan Reynolds will be a voice and maybe be in the costume, but Deadpool is not I an attractive character. You know what? I will, I, well, I know that, but I'm saying they got Ryan Reynolds to play. It's, I guarantee you, I will, I will bet you that I get to stab you in the eye if I'm wrong. They will have one scene of Ryan Reynolds, they'll have, like, shirtless for no reason, no reason, shirtless. Well, they'll, they'll, have, they'll have pre-tumor Ryan Reynolds. Exactly. And but they will have Ryan Reynolds shirtless. Why would you have him in a movie and have his clothes on? That doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense. But, yeah, so Deadpool's <laughs> exciting. Uh, they're getting on the works on that. No idea when it's coming out. Um, Johnny already talked about the Marvel Universe coming to an end, uh, which was a big part. I think uh, they're calling that one um, Battle World going to be the combination of the two of those um so there's going to be a lot of mashups so i think all the geeks and nerds are like i'm not a huge comic book fan but the idea of all those universes smashing together and you finally get to validate like who you think would win in a fight should be a perfect opportunity for all that and then they'll just hit the reset button on the marvel series like they do with every comic book series and start anew so. I can't wait to see Twitter blow up with people being like, I told you so-and-so would crush so-and-so in a fight with the... And then people being like, no, 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 they totally... That was wrong and it shouldn't have Spoiler, Wolverine beats everybody because it's what he does. He just rages out and slashes things and never ending. And somehow everybody loves him. I don't get it. He said, um, he said, I, was the, he said I was the Wolverine of unlockable characters. So small and... Feisty. Lash, lash out at everybody. Boring backstory. <laughs> no, her backstories. I hate you so much. Crazy. I hate you so much. Um, Ant Man trailer recently came out uh, with Paul Rudd in it. I don't know how I feel about that because Ant Man, he's kind of a yeah, he's kind of a lackluster character. Yeah, watch it. <clears throat> I feel like he's 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 the backbone for the technology of so many Marvel characters yeah. and he's the origin of Ultron. So I'm wondering if like, they're going to be focusing on Ultron in this one since Marvel, uh, Avengers two is supposed to be around Ultron, but the way Avengers two previews make it look is Ultron is like Tony Stark's creation. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know what they're going to do. They've got there. Paul Rudd playing Ant-Man, so I'm wondering if this is going to be a romantic comedy. Yeah, Paul what Rudd's... What exactly they're hoping to accomplish. Paul Rudd's primarily romantic comedies. Yeah, I think, I think it should be entertaining. casting ever. Oh, I think yeah. it'll be entertaining. I'm just... I can't even wrap my brain around that. Yeah. Um, uh, if you guys aren't into the Marvel Universe, uh, Power Rangers apparently is going to have a new movie uh, reuniting tons of the alumni, including the MMA fighting Green Ranger. You MMA losing Green Ranger. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> He's like, I'm really good at pretend fighting, guys. But... It's like in the, it's like in, um, in the Kung Pao <laughs> movie, where it's like, I'm bleeding. That means I won. <laughs> <laughs> now my face to your foot attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, that should be entertaining uh, for Power Rangers fans. Let's see what else we got. Um, oh yeah, PlayStation is doing an original series. Yeah, yeah, PlayStation is doing an original series like Netflix and Amazon. Apparently. PlayStation is going to fill the void that Netflix is going to leave as they hurl into darkness. Yeah, Netflix is dropping, like, Everything. all their, They're dropping Batman. They've dropped all their BBC shows. Yeah. Like, I swear, if Orange is the New Black Season 3 mm -hmm. and House of Cards Season 3 isn't good, there's going to be an uproar and a riot because that's the only reason why people are keeping Netflix mm -hmm. at this point. I'm like, because it sure isn't Hemlock Grove. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it's not. No, it's not. Hemlock Grove is, a, is one of those TV shows that looks like it shouldn't have made it past the pilot on the CW. Oh, yeah. I agree. Yeah. It, Way awful. It was awful. I got further than you did in it. Yeah, you got to episode seven, and that's a that's an endurance test oh, to yeah. even get past the first two I can two tolerate episodes. awful things. That's true. You can indeed. Uh, but yeah, PlayStation's original series is going to be yeah. Powers, which is yeah. based off the comic book Powers, which I believe is a Marvel franchise. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but uh, that one should be, and it's coming with the PlayStation Plus package, 
which I'm assuming is kind of their version of Xbox Live. Yeah. I don't know a whole lot of details about it. I was trying to find out, but they haven't really released it yet. I so. think it's just going to be so cool that you can get an original series on your console. Like, I don't almost want to watch it just to do that. Well, it confused me because PlayStation is Sony, and Sony's done lots of things, so I don't know yeah, how this Sony is Yeah, but Sony hasn't done it special, as the but... name, uh, under the name of PlayStation, <laughs> have they? No, and now it's magic. Um, let's see, uh, Fox is now pushing, uh, Sleepy Hollow for a lot of format changes, yeah. uh, in order to, to start up a new season on that. I'm hoping that the main format change they're pushing is that it's good. Um, <laughs> hey. I'm gonna murder so, you in your sleep. I hate you so much. Right now they currently say it's too dark and confusing for new people to be able to join in, which I don't think that's accurate. I don't I, think I it's think confusing. It is, I, I feel like it is confusing just because the story goes off, like they're pulling in things from the Bible and then from history and then from a magical world <laughs> that they've made up. And it's... It's all nonsense. It's like, I don't think it's confusing. I think you know, it's just nonsense. I'll tell you the thing. It's like, and Benjamin Franklin played his magical flute, which killed the headless horseman. Everybody <laughs> knows this. Yeah, like, it's, it was in your history books. Yeah. I'll tell you the thing that, about that show that annoys me is how Ichabod Crane just mercilessly name drops. He's like, oh, yeah, I hung out with Benjamin Franklin. Mm. Shut up, Ichabod. Nobody cares. Nobody yeah. cares what you did. Don't say anything about hanging out with Tesla, because that would have been better. Yeah, but, yeah, that would have been awesome. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Tom Hardy left the cast for Suicide Squad, um, which is the DC Suicide Squad. And he was being played. He was supposed to be playing Rick Flag, which is the leader of the Suicide um, Squad. They're talking about Jake Gyllenhaal potentially replacing him. I don't get that. Tom mm -hmm. Hardy's a buff, large, attractive man. Jake Gyllenhaal is a not any of those <laughs> man. Uh, so Jake Gyllenhaal was in the Nightcrawler movie that was not about Nightcrawler. That. That was so, so disheartening. Because yeah. Nightcrawler is like Spider-Man and Nightcrawler, my two favorite characters, and. It was so dis. I'm like, are they finally giving a fan service tonight? No, this is just some sad movie about exactly. a psychopath. Exactly. So, it's so more of a movie about your life. Um, World of Warcraft or uh, Blizzard? Blizzard is going into the MOBA market with Heroes of the Storm, which is long overdue considering the fact that the MOBA, the whole MOBA movement of games, was based off a of mod of Warcraft Three. So. It's surprising that it's taken them like know, 12 yeah. years to get into the market itself. Hopefully they can compete with like League of Legends and Dota and Smite, which is my personal favorite. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Blizzard has a tendency of having extremely hard learning curves. Yeah, yeah. Like Didn't you lose like all of it? Did you lose everything? Again, just to reiterate. You lost, lost a lot. So much. And the worst part is, I have no shame admitting that I'm awful at things, but in like Hearthstone, I can't even confirm whether I'm awful at something or whether it's just everybody's already bought upgrades and everything and I'm just at an extreme disadvantage. So I would it's assume it's because you're awful. All right. Is there anything else you would like to talk about, Amy? I can't really think of anything. I think we covered it. Well, that's thing. normal. But. <laughs> well, if he lives through the rest of this evening, he may be back to report with me another time. Possibly. But that's going to do it for us in the news. Have a good night. Amy and Paul, Nerdy News. Hey, if you guys uh, like Paul joining in, send us a tweet at Live Comics. Let us know that you want to see him back. And uh, if you don't want to see him back, let us know that too. Say, you know, Paul pissed me off and I don't want to, you know, whatever. I did talk garbage about Wolverine, which is everybody uh, Ant -Man. I enjoy. Ant-Man, you talk well, garbage about. I don't, that, I don't hate Hank dangerous, Man. Dangerous territory. I don't hate Hank all I'm Man. Saying. I just mean cinematically, how do you make Ant-Man as impressive as other Marvel characters? Because he's awesome. He's an, a genius. Like To me, he's like <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. Mr. Fantastic, I hate as a superhero, but he makes a ton of the technology yeah. and devices that everybody loves in the Marvel Universe. He's yep, necessary he for the awesomeness of other characters. He does. He he is. And 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 Hank Pym certainly is. Well, thank you guys for the nerdy news. Give them a big round of applause. Yeah. Alright, I'm looking to see if we got any live tweets. Anybody uh tweeting us any questions for Ask the Prophet? No. No. <laughs> Somebody from our uh our studio audience ask a question and I will divine it with my magical powers. Is Johnny really a prophet? 
Is Johnny really a prophet? Um, I better not tell you now, is what it says. So that will have to wait until later. All right, we got a couple more guests we need to bring on. Um, <clears throat> Nancy, bring, bring that painting with you. Yes. Um, we, uh, we are privileged to be in partnership with Cosplay Collective. Uh, Dee Volpe and Nancy Arch created this awesome organization. You saw them the first episode. And Nancy wanted to show off her uh, steampunk Catwoman. So, yeah, this is her original steampunk Catwoman. And she's going to, like, completely destroy our technology. It's awesome. It's I'll, awesome. I'll just take it with No, that's great. No, so, um, you know, you, you, what made you decide to go steampunk Catwoman? Well, I love steampunk. Uh, and my, uh, Dee was doing Batwoman. So I thought I wanted to sort of do DC, kind of like the villains, thought this might be easy, fun, different, haven't seen anybody else do it, so I sort of just went crazy. And you, you made the mask? Uh, I made everything, the, the jacket was right. a Goodwill find that we tailored and put some new stuff on there. And, and the corset, did you make the corset? Uh, no, actually, I did not make the course. But you modified it. Modified with it the with, brass with the brass rings. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, and so and the belts aren't. I didn't make the belts either. Yeah, right. but but you you modified or yeah you made the whip, and um, you know one of the things you, we talk about in the cosplay panels is found object cosplay. Right. You know, finding stuff at Goodwill. Yes. Or in your closet. You know, there's this this kind of thing that people believe that if you don't make it. 100% handmade, and that it's not legit, and we don't we don't hold that opinion. We, we don't hold that opinion, though. No. You can. We just want you guys to have fun doing it. So if you get your costume completely done somewhere by a, a company, if you go to Walmart and buy it at Halloween, as long as you wear it, wear it proudly, doesn't matter. And have fun. That's right. Yep. Fun. Yep. So uh, Cosplay Collective, check them out on Facebook. Uh, or you can go to cosplaycollective.org.org because we're doing charitable things for yeah, local charities, yeah. kids, hospitals, the yeah. whole nine yards. You can get involved, and we would love to do that. Now, you brought this along. This is uh, Dee's original painting of Wonder Woman. Um, we, you know, we've got a lot of artists in this group. Yes. Um, I'm an illustrator. Dee's a painter. Um, Leanna makes jewelry and cool home stuff. decor, and you know what? There may be other hidden talents that I don't even know about yet. Yeah, you haven't seen mine yet. No, you're right. I haven't. But D <laughs> is selling this. Yeah. D is going to sell this. Yes. Uh, where is she going to sell this? Probably at, at oh, uh, Miss Geek Boutique. Right. So that's Woo! Leanna's new Etsy store, Miss Geek Boutique. It's awesome. And uh, we'll be selling wares, not just Leanna's awesome jewelry and home decor, but this awesome home decor. You can purchase, because this is awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. What What is this, acrylic on canvas? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's fantastic. And that would look great hanging in your home on the wall. <laughs> Absolutely. Yep. I might buy it myself, actually. Anyway, so thank you, Nancy, for being here. <laughs> thank you. Check out cosplaycollective.org. Yes, please. please come and play with us. Yeah. That's not a bad thing. Yes. <laughs> oh, hey, take this with you. Oh, yes, yes. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. All right. Excellent. We got one last special guest, and then we're going to call it a night. When we were at um, Mac, I had a buddy of mine come along to help us because we discovered something. Um, and, and, and I'm glad I had the foresight to do this. We discovered that we really need help. <laughs> when, we, when we're running around and doing all of this programming, the panels and performing, and we need someone to come and help us just watch the booth and, and be there. And my buddy Eugene came, and he also has a service that he offers. We want to talk about it because it's awesome. So please put your hands together for the swag commander, Eugene Bolton. <laughs> And, and this is another hep cat what knows how to dress. Can That's you right. dig that? Yeah, we are birds of a feather, my brother. You, know, you were talking about the Marvel Universe before. I want to talk about the Swag Universe. The Swag, swag universe. universe. I am the Swag Commander. That's my Electra Swing DJ moniker. 
I don't do very much DJing, but I do some mixes that I try to play with. You've got SoundCloud going. You can yeah. check him out on SoundCloud at Swag Commander. Swag Commander. I also have, uh, that's my steampunk character. I'm in the steampunk Woo! as well. But what I'm here to talk about tonight is my third um, venture, you might call it. Yeah. Swag Weddings. Swag Weddings? Swag Weddings. What? Swag Weddings? What, what is that all about? And by the way, I see somebody gave blood. I see that you've met Count Swagula. I did. Yeah, so they you, we posted pictures of Eugene as Count Swagula, his new cosplay character, combining the Swag Commander Swag with commander. the legendary Universal movie monster, Count oh, Dracula. That's right. Anyway, back to Swag Weddings. If you want a steampunk wedding, a diesel punk wedding, vintage wedding, Gatsby wedding, cosplay, or cosplay wedding, or even just a traditional wedding, Swag Weddings is your person to call to get that wedding done. Swag Weddings at Comcast.net if you want to email me directly. Facebook page is uh, SwagWeddings.officiant. Now, and you are a, an official licensed uh, wedding officiant. I'm, I'm an ordained minister. And um, you're going to be doing some weddings at uh, the Steampunk World's Fair. Steampunk World's Fair, and if any sign up, I'll be doing it at Marvel City as well. Yeah, okay, Marvel City, he'll be there as well. So here's the deal. Uh, he's a buddy of ours, so if you book in the rest of the Comic Extravaganza tr crew for some of your uh, programming, we can bring him along to do some uh, wedding officiating. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know, we, we can make that happen. How I, cool would that I, be? I keep my rates low, because I know, you know, this economy, not everyone's got a whole bunch of money to spend. I think, you know, I've done some comparisons, and my rates are low compared to others. But I go a step beyond. I don't just do the traditional wedding. I do those. Yes, I do. But I just don't do traditional. I do the steampunk. I do the diesel punk. I do the gaspy. I do the cosplay. I do you name it, I'll do it. Would you would you do a furry wedding? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have to draw a line somewhere. Okay? No offense to our furry friends. I think he's kidding. I'm not sure. Um, anyway. The only furry costume I have is when I strip down naked and you don't want to see No, it. we don't. <laughs> no, we don't. Oh, Leanna does. Leanna does. She's sick. You will have nightmares forever. Sick. Whatever. I tell you, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. So check it out. Swagweddingsofficient.com. Swag, well, no. Swagweddings.com okay. is coming. My son's working on the website. It should be up next week. But you are on Facebook. My Facebook is swagweddings.officiant. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. And you can link up to them through our Facebook page, Comic Extravaganza Live. We'll connect you as well, and uh, that'll be an awesome thing. You know, last week you were talking about the School for the Blind. Yes, yeah, so yeah, yeah. You yeah. were wondering how people driving could see a School for the Blind. Yeah, yeah. I used to work at the Parkway Tower downtown at a parking garage. And each floor had a sign for, you know, parking garage level eight, four, you know, seven, six, and they all had Braille on them. I'm thinking, who is blind driving a car? Oh, oh that's find, pretty awesome. Needs to find their place in the parking I garage. I need to go take a picture of that, like, right now. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, Eugene. Thank you, Swag Commander, for being with us. We appreciate it. See y'all. Hey, we want to bring the rest of the... Oh, 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 we got some notifications. Yeah. Some tweets. But it's not from Tina. Tina is missing in action. I don't know. And and you know what? It's just Amy. <laughs> and, and, she loves us so much. Yeah, they're they're tweeting. Yeah. I'm yeah. really I'm really just vain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Vain. She's awesome though. We love Amy. Okay. I, yeah, we do. Yeah, and and Dee <laughs> is tweeting live from the Houdini room. And uh, graphic policy is shared. So yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. But we want questions from you and uh, we're gonna go on a search party for uh, Tina Vita after this show. So uh, anyway, a uh, couple of people to thank. First of all, we want to thank Blue Microphone for um, supplying us with the Yeti microphone. And uh, we want to thank our sponsor, Comic Bento. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can link to them through our show notes. Do you like comics? Of course you do. You're watching the show. Do you like surprises? I know you do. You can get both in your mailbox every month for less than 20 bucks. Right. Have you seen this, Leanna? They send you I've this seen it box. On YouTube. Yeah, this box of comics. Yeah. It's this huge box of comics. And you don't know what's in it. Right. It's just uh, random, but it's big and it's a lot. And I'm, I'm a subscriber. I get cool stuff. And, and you can do that. We're an affiliate. Click our link and you help support this show. Yay. That would be Woo. epic. 
Obviously, check out graphicpolicy.com. They're our distribution partner, and uh, they have great news every day. Um, they awesome, really do. Awesome. They actually read their articles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got contributors all over the world, all over the country, and some great, great stuff coming out of Graphic Policy. Um, also, we want to thank uh, Rick Fink and his Gas House Gorillas. They're the ones that provided our theme song, Powerhouse. It's from their latest album. You can find it on nice. iTunes or at rickfink.com. And uh, he's awesome. And uh, I feel like I'm forgetting someone. Um, well, no, sponsor. Sponsor. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like I want to say, no, I'm, but I'm not going to. Do I need to get the signs? No, 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 no. no. I, I, old <laughs> habits die hard is right? what I'm saying. Yeah. 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 But uh, anyway, thanks for you guys for tuning in. You can uh, find us on YouTube. Uh, we'll be uploaded uh, in reruns on demand, if you will, uh, tomorrow. Or if you like just the audio version, you can download it on iTunes. Oh, that's the big story. Two episodes, we hit number 50. Oh, yeah. On the top ranked podcasts That's on good, iTunes. Right? Yeah, <laughs> after only two episodes for That's performing not bad arts. At all. No, it's really oh. good <laughs> for performing arts podcasts. We were ranked right at number fifty. Oh. So hopefully, you know, we'll... to the top, baby. Yeah, blowing up. <laughs> all right. So uh, anyway, that's it for this week. Any last words? No. I'll be back. <laughs> next week <laughs> remember to send us your pros and cons against and for public nudity and uh, tweet us at live comics and uh, check us out at www.bigdaddycoolshows.com and we will catch you on the flip side ah!